All right, season two of Fine Tuning is underway. A very low-key intro here because we got a band from Columbus, Ohio, and we're going to talk to them today. But since it's kind of hard to record a band, uh, we're going to do um, we're, we're going to launch the episode with one of their tracks from their uh, latest release. It's called Golden Hour, and it's a it's a song that I enjoy very much. Golden out, faded leather couch Searching for something else to dream about Spend all my afternoons wishing that I was somewhere Anywhere else It's Temple Chico and pineapple gum Keep you squirming under my thumb Skin sticky in the dust won't settle for Summer sun is sinking lower So that was Golden Hour, which is a song, like I said, that I'm a big fan of, and I'm a big fan of this band. Uh, I don't know. Welcome. We got uh, Carly and uh, Jack from the band. Uh, we're met, we're down one member. Randall. Alex Randall. Yeah. The bassist in the band. He's installing a security system somewhere in a top secret location, That's probably. He's a cool dude. Uh, <laughs> we met. I've, met, I've seen this band play twice. Um, first time was in uh, Athens, Ohio, uh, when they were opening up for Angela Purley, which was a sweet show. And I saw this band and I was like, whoa, I don't know who these people are, but they are excellent. And then it just happened to be that they were playing in Detroit when I was in Michigan um, about a month later and or a couple weeks later. So I caught them again and they were... Uh, gracious enough to do my little podcast here 
I don't even know where to begin because, like, you guys, like, I've never seen... It's been a while since I've seen a band where I didn't know any of them. And then I saw you guys play, and it was just, like... You guys are super tight. Like, you guys, like, I don't know. The whole set was... Because uh, I don't know how long you guys played. Like, half hour, 45 minutes, whatever it was. But it was tight. Like, one, not a lot of talking. Just, boom, into the next thing. Yeah. And you guys did your thing. Is that something that took a while to form? Or did that just kind of happen? Well, I'm terrible at stage banter. I don't really know how to do it. Like, I'm I'm okay at it when I'm not on stage. But then somehow, every time I'm, like, up there and, like, in my performance vibe, I just suck at talking in between songs. I just never am happy with what comes out of my mouth. <laughs> so I've taken to kind of just getting to work, you know? Because yeah. I know that's what people are there for. They they want to they wanna hear the hits. <laughs> so uh, just play the hits. <laughs> but, yeah, we, we try to keep it moving, you know, try to keep it focused on the music. You know, even I would say even at, at our, like, first rehearsal as a band, it was like Carly showed me and Alex the songs, and it just kind of clicked, and we all just kind of got it and and that's sort of what it's been about from the beginning has just been playing the music it's kind of refreshing though because nowadays it seems like almost everybody it's like they enjoy the talking as much as they do the playing like the bands at least you know what i mean it's like they have to you're supposed to be funny and some people are really good at it and i don't know like i'm not really a shy person i just it's almost like it takes two different parts of my brain to do the the like talking making jokes and then like the playing the songs because i don't i don't know it it's just a different switch and the, i i love hearing good stage banter it's one of my favorite things i just am not super proficient at it and i always am impressed with bands who like play through their sets and like say a couple things but just like keep it moving i don't know why that always reads as like really just like pro to me yeah like like i know gary clark jr does that yeah yeah bob dylan does that bob dylan doesn't even say thank you i know yeah well yeah yeah he he doesn't (laughs) give a fuck anymore (laughs) he's Mm -hmm. like i've been doing this for a hundred years man yeah i'll be doing it it for a (laughs) hundred more unfortunately why won't i just die of cancer or something (laughs) Um, but I love it. It was so refreshing. I was like, man, a band that like doesn't necessarily enjoy their own, uh, I don't want to say like ego, but like, you know, like the microphone thing where it's like, Hey, I got the mic, so I'm going to, yeah. Well, in my mind, I'm always just still so like baffled that anybody wants to hear anything I'm doing, which I know that's like naive and like it's just like a like a a young way of thinking about it and i don't know that i necessarily feel that way so much anymore but it's still like that habit is there where i'm just like you have their attention and their time and they're here just play the music don't make it about you like let them have the experience the other thing that i was curious about was like you don't see too many three piece bands anymore like it's you guys true. fill up a room with three people like that's crazy one thing that being in a three-piece lets you do is it uh, uh you could take up a little bit more space since since you don't have quite as many people i can do some more drum fills and, and the bass can be kind of funky and you know carly can take some solos and so it l- l- lets you have a little bit of freedom yeah yeah and yeah there's because there's no like there's no like excess really you know every person that's there as you're saying is like doing like playing an integral role in the sound and so you are almost able to just like lock in with each other in a way that you can't always do when there are too many people on stage because it's you know they're just more communication that has to happen for that whereas when there are just three of you and you can all look at each other and go okay now we're going to this part it's it's so easy it can happen so seamlessly we started as a four piece and we had another guitar player ted ted langhorst and he he's a wizard he was so good um and then when he he left like probably probably less than a year about a year in this other would you say yeah 
Okay. And uh, and I was like freaking out about that. So we played a couple of shows as a three piece. I didn't really. It took me a while to get it. To like understand what the power of the trio can be, because I was a little nervous, and there's a lot of guitar in the music. And if you listen to the recordings, it's like there are a lot of layers, and there's not. It's not like wall of sound, but there's definitely a lot of. There are definitely a lot of parts, and to translate that to a stage with just one guitar player sound felt really daunting. I think when the first few times we did it and then we got a fourth member again we got another guitar player um Vinny Valentino and he played with us for a while and that was a ton of fun because he brought a totally different flavor to um the the band and like a totally different energy to the to the stage and I I just I loved every show we played with him um but then he uh started working with another band so wasn't able to come out to all the gigs, and we kind of were just like, well, I guess let's just try the three-piece thing. Like, we thought about looking for another member, and we, we may add, like, a like a keyboard player in the future, but as far as, like, another guitar player goes, I I learned how to, like, comp for myself a little bit more, and I also learned to trust Jack and Alex a lot more. And over the course of the last probably a year or so I'd say that we've been doing the the trio thing it's just every show has felt more comfortable and tighter and just like I feel like we're like really honing in on like what our live sound is and I'm feeling less pressured to like recreate the album sound and more freedom to kind of just like let us in reinterpret the songs in the moment as the three of us which is super empowering that was actually something that i enjoyed a lot like having heard you guys first before i heard any of your recorded material um and i don't know did i did i even say the name of the band did i say souther off the top it's pronounced souther not uh, I heard someone say Souther. Souther. And I wanted to fight him. <laughs> yeah, we get that one a lot. The, the ambiguity is kind of fun, you know? You got you got to let them gnash some teeth, Yeah, you, know? you got to work for it. The, yeah, uh, the Oscar Wilde quote, what's he say? The, the only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. <laughs> He's got a few good ones. Uh, yeah, quite a few. He's <laughs> very yeah. prolific individual. <laughs> But yeah, so Souther is uh, is the guest here. If I didn't say that, I'm just having too much fun, so that's that's why sometimes I get uh, distracted. Yeah. Of full disclosure, before we came out, uh, Carly brought some individual, uh, what are these individual shot bottles of uh, of whiskey? Yeah. What do you what do you call this single portion? Uh, Flight uh, attendant status. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, just a little too much. But yeah, we like to have fun here. And by the way, quick shout out to Marcus, by the way, for driving down from Michigan to Columbus, yeah. Ohio this morning to come talk to us. Yeah, that was a good time. I was looking forward to it. This happened last minute. Um, but yeah, it's like, when, like, so getting back to the point, like I said, I get distracted sometimes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Like when I heard you guys live and I went and listened to the album, I was like, I, I there was a little bit of familiar things because I recognized some of the songs. But um, then when I saw you the second time, like I saw where you kind of improvised a little bit and extended songs and like, you know, kind of made it. A different thing um, as c- compared to just yeah. replaying the song which I think is awesome because I think bands try and do that sometimes but they always don't have the chops to like pull it off like you got to be pretty affi- you know proficient at your instruments to be able to like wing a like a two-minute instrument section yeah I mean? yeah still yeah it's it's still a little bit aspirational for me I think in some regards because I sort of fell in love with music by by way of like some of the older jam bands not like jam bands tm but like the bands that would take sections and stretch them out and that those were always the parts that i really really loved was when i felt the like the whatever that like improv magic is kind of take hold of everyone on stage and 
attempting to create that is it is tough I mean like there are definitely nights when I know I didn't get there but like I still want to try every night because when it works and when it hits and when you nail it and when we're all on the same page it's like the best feeling in the entire world yeah and you guys do well I know you guys are harder probably on yourselves than you know than like the audience is obviously because the audience isn't used to seeing people do that kind of stuff like because most people just can't play their instruments as well as people maybe of the past used to well, <laughs> you know, you got Instagram now, so like, why would you ever learn how to do anything? <laughs> Sorry. Well, a lot of times uh, in songs, you just have every note written out, and when and when sometimes instead you just have like a form where you just have chords, and yeah. you know, it's it's the drums and bass playing a part over and over, and, and then. I can't count shit i'm so bad like when i it's like i've tried to explain this to them because jack and alex are like the opposite brain type to me and like there are some solos that i write out and i play pretty much the same way every time but then there are lots of sections that i just intentionally leave improv and i describe the the moment every time as being like the section comes up and i'm like in like a Tarantino film, like in a dimly lit room with like myself at one end of the table and myself at the other end and myself goes, uh, what are we going to do here? And I go, uh, I don't know, man. What do you think? And myself goes, yeah, uh, that was up to you. And I go, okay. All right. Well, let's try this. And then like, just whatever happens happens. But like, I, I'm not super aware of like time and space in those moments when I'm like trying to just k- kind of perform fluidly. And I know that's this sounds very ethereal and dumb, but to, <laughs> to give you like a small like a small insight into like whatever my think space is here, um, it's very much it, it's just it's just out of it's kind of out of reality, I guess, in a sense and. So t- learning how to like try and balance the the magic that is totally detaching from numbers and needing to actually know like how many bars of this you want to do before you want to go back into the thing and how to communicate that to the other two people on stage has been a really fun and interesting learning experience over the course of the last three years. And, and what, what Carly's talking about, about just like flow playing or, or playing from your soul, a lot of times it's it can be super fun on drums and bass anyway to kind of have that conversation. And if, if she plays something that is really inspiring to us, it's like we can talk back and, and, and we can, you know, give a response to what she's doing. And that kind of dialogue a lot of times can can help things stay really interesting. Yeah, it's a really cool synergy. I I feel like very like I don't I don't want to use any like dumb buzzwords, but I truly feel kind of like I'm very grateful that I am able to experience that fusion of energy cuz I don't know I don't know that it's something that everyone who plays music gets to feel like when you have two other musicians on stage that you're able to communicate with in that way it's so cool i mean it's so good this is actually exactly why i was excited to talk to you guys and why we kind of i was i was trying to in the back of my mind like man they're perfect for this because um what you guys are talking about is i think your expression like your art expression, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like, totally. There's this in the music is very much a two faced animal where you have these you know, this side that is commercialized, the side that like we're trying to sell albums, we're trying to make things that people enjoy, and then there's this other side that doesn't really care. They're trying to make things that they enjoy, and like they're trying to touch base with what they're feeling, um, and sometimes that translates into record sales or you know t-shirt sales or whatever or support and following and that kind of thing but like when i saw you guys play i saw three people that were pursuing this thing that they were after and whoever is on board 
join the train jump yeah. on we're cool with it you know yeah. we'll say hi we'll hang out afterwards we're cool you know we're just like normal people doing this but like like to me i was like it was one of the more, more artistic things i've seen um where it was like man these people don't care it's almost like you guys aren't a punk band but it's almost like that old school punk approach definitely right? yeah we definitely all kind of carry that attitude a little bit where it's just yeah we're like we're out to we're out to communicate with you we're like it doesn't feel so much like we're putting on a show as it feels like we're having a conversation with each other and with the audience. How do you guys navigate that? Like, is this something you guys talked about? Or because it is, like, music is saturated. You know what I mean? There's a lot of it. So, There's yeah. a lot. Everybody in the world, <laughs> it's easier now than ever to make music. You know, anybody could do it. Every dad can, like, get his dad bros together yeah. and like, have a yeah. garage band. You know yeah, 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 like, yeah. I know, I know not, a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, it's not hard to do. So, like, how do you navigate? Like, how do you guys, as a band, navigate? Like, do you guys have like a vision of what you want? Because I, I imagine, like, just from afar, there's like this line you have to toe of: Do we try and sell ourselves? Like, do we try and market ourselves? Like, what's the what? What's the what are we after here? Um, and I don't know. It's like it's such a fine line. It's yeah. It's I mean it's something that we have mold for like three years straight. You know it's it, like artistry right now means something so different than it ever has. And as you're saying, it's saturated, and that is both good and bad. And I think in the current state of things, there are a lot of things that will make you successful that don't have anything to do with the art that you create and kind of like navigating which like how far to go in that direction is definitely kind of trying like you you sort of have to feel it out but i think at the end of the day what for me at least what's most important is like producing something that feels authentic because there like there's a lot of music and a lot of it's great but there is a lot of it that feels really contrived to me and i think the most important thing you can do as an artist today where you have access to every person in the world if you want it with enough money and enough time spent on instagram is to produce something that is unique to you and i think the people that do that are I, I think it really comes through when that when when that's when that's the case and I, yeah I, I just for for Souther I see it as being this great thing with moving parts that we we'll just will continue to put our love and time into and the people that it resonates with will want more of it and we will give them more of it and it's definitely we're sort of taking the slow burn approach because blues rock music quote unquote which i feel like is sort of the genre that we ended up falling into for worse or for better is not very popular right now like it's just not that cool anymore and like that's fine, but, like, there are still people that really get down on it, and, like, we fucking love what we're doing, so we're just gonna keep, you know, chasing the dragon and playing our best stuff and writing our best stuff and being present in whatever space we're in as a band and as people and making that connection because I think that's the most powerful thing. You know, the f I'm still baffled that people go to shows, which that sounds stupid, but like truly when there is like infinity on the internet, like I have a projector in my room there and like a full on screen and like I don't watch TV very much, but every time I do, I realize that like you could just spend your whole life doing that, you know, and like to like get in your car, pay money to be at a bar that probably smells terrible with a bunch of people talking really loudly at the end of a long day that you've worked to go see a band is like incredible to me like that is so cool and when people come to shows 
in the dead of winter and say, hey, I love your music. I don't need anything else. I don't know if that's the same for everybody, but that's how I feel about it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's that's it right there. Um, I don't know. You don't see that. Like A lot of times I can see people and I can watch a show and I can watch someone playing and you get that vibe like you just get a vibe from people and i don't I, sometimes i feel like a weirdo because like i love music so much i play music myself and i do like this thing but like i can see it and i was like i'm such a weirdo for music that like there's one you can tell when someone's doing it because they feel it and they want to do it and they don't care if people are listening or not like that person in the bar that like you said the bar is so loud and they got some buddy playing an acoustic guitar and it's like they got no chance yeah. to win that bar over. Yeah, yeah, Zero yeah, chance. yeah, yeah. But they're up there doing their thing. Like, you can always tell when someone's just doing it for the right reasons. But for you guys on top of that, it's just the music itself. Like, everybody could want to do it that way. But for you guys, you guys actually have, like, the skill set in place where you guys are creating good music that people should hear. Um, uh, I don't know. You guys got new me. You guys are working on new music though, right? We have a full length album that is like mixed and mastered and done. Um, it's been to to go back to your to your toe in the line of being marketable and being relatable. That's something that we're really sort of trying to parse out. Um, like. It, it's like it's a it's a weird time to release music right now because every time you do you are assuming responsibility for it in one way or another. And that can be really good or really bad, depending on how viral the music goes, I guess, so to speak. Um, but we just really want... We, we, we're really proud of this record, and we invested a lot of our time and our energy into producing it and we want to make sure that it receives the the right treatment i guess and like gets enough momentum behind it to like you know get like give it to people that need it um so we're really trying to like figure out what that means for us as far as releasing it but we're pretty stoked for that to happen soon <laughs> Yeah, we, d we definitely want to put it out sometime this year and think that it's uh, if so, so the last one we put out was called Bloom. It was a five song EP. And this one, uh, the, the sound is is kind of similar um, where it's 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 layered. You know, we have a we have a enough parts in there that we we want. We, we think it sounds full. And uh, what Marcus was talking about that authenticity and, and kind of that vibe what i think we're what we were really shooting for was just making sure that that makes it in to the recordings and and to make sure that uh that when you listen to it you you're, you're getting that that feeling that we're putting into it and that vibe that we're yeah. putting into it yeah yeah we definitely we took a little bit of a different approach with this one um bloom was really polished in a lot of ways and i think for those songs it definitely it made sense to 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 produce it with that sort of flavor um but yeah with this new one we definitely wanted to kind of harness some of that live energy and some of that rawness and just, just encapsulate what that feeling is that you get when you see us live and I think we did a really solid job of like making sure that it was just polished enough to where everything makes sense and there are layers and everything that we wanted to communicate is communicated um, while still kind of paying homage to whatever that raw, like visceral th sound that we make on stage as just a three piece is. That's rad. I'm I'm stoked to hear it because yeah, if you guys, uh, even if you guys were able to capture like part of what you guys do live, 
Um, there are definitely some moments that in in the record that are just like, oh shit! Like they might they might as well just be on stage. Yeah. See, and that's it's so weird in 2020 to be talking about. Yeah, this band, like, basically what you guys have so far recorded, it's like, that's solid. You can listen to that in the car, at your house, whatever you're doing. But it, you guys are a band that, yeah, but you got to see them. But you yeah. got to see them. I de- I've always aspired to be that way yeah. with whatever the music is that I'm making. I want the live show to be something special and different and i'm telling like for anybody thinking of this uh, jack and i I think jack's got something to say so i don't want him to forget that but the uh like for we're not talking we're talking we're not talking about like big theaters or nothing right like there this band creates this atmosphere in pj's logger house in detroit michigan you know what i mean it's like we're talking about like a 20 by 20 room you know like the as I know people that are nostalgic for like an era where there was no internet distraction. Like they had nothing to do on the weekend except go see whoever was playing at the local club. You know what I mean? Like that's all they had. There was no other form of entertainment other than that and drugs and making babies. That was it. Right. Like that's all you had. Right. So it was like do that, but you had to see this band, and that's what you guys are creating in 2020. Well. Well, and I'm just, that's really flattering. And thank you a lot for saying that. Also very uh, insightful on a lot of levels. But but I, I, I think that, that uh, as far as seeing a band live, part of part of doing the kind of the improv stuff and kind of the, a little bit of the, the looseness that we have live is I think part of the goal in that is making each show different. It's that, okay. is that you never quite know... I never know exactly what I'm going to play until I until I get on stage. I mean, I'm going to have a general general guidelines, but it's probably going to be a little bit different. Maybe we'll play the song a little bit slower. I don't know what Carly's going to play on guitar. <laughs> and and so uh, it's you know if if you see us you know one month the the next month it's probably going to be a pretty different set and we'll probably play the songs just just a little bit differently depending on how we're feeling and. It's it's like, I I think when Carly was saying, you know, people will drive out to the show after a long day at work instead of just watching TV. It's like if if you can you can pause the TV show, you can rewind, you know. But when you're in that live that live show, like in that bar, it's like if I mess up you're going to know I messed up. And it's like, there's a real person up there who missed that snare drum or dropped this stick. And it's, it's like, there's a little bit of a seat of your pants kind of like, I don't know, like if it's anxiety or, 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 or what, but just a little bit of like uh, accountability, you know, it's like, it's like, I want to be, it's for me anyway, when I'm playing, like, I don't want to mess up. <laughs> And, and that like urgency or, or a need to, uh, that like, I think that comes across live in a way that maybe not so much on a, on a recording. Yeah, absolutely. Flying by the seat of your pants is a really good descriptor because it definitely feels like that. There've been nights when like, you know, like some dumb shit happened two hours before the show and we like all are just on one, you know? And like the energy is totally different same songs you know but like just like being open to that variance you know like being open to exploring them in a different way is it's it's very cool and very visceral and like also only happens one time you know it's like if you've got something in your system and you have to get it out of your system by playing music it's like there's nothing worse than getting on stage and being afraid to do that it's like when you're getting on stage and you're there to play music it's like you cannot be afraid to like feel it exercise those demons (laughs) yeah exactly like feel it for real when you're up there or else it's just gonna, you know, you're just playing a part. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, playing play, playing the part, I think, is something that I've sort of tried to rage against a little bit, you know, like, and it's it's hard to describe because, like, 
when I'm on stage, I'm playing the part that I wrote, you know, but like, I'm not performing the part in quotations. I'm playing the part as it feels right to play in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm, it's just in like reinterpreting it kind of in real time. And I think that the second I stop reinterpreting it in real time on stage is the second that it kind of dies and like there have definitely been nights where I've felt like I was kind of phoning it in and I wasn't really feeling what I was doing and like it like the feeling when I get off stage is very apparent you know like it's it's not a, a it's it's not a good like release it's not a it's not it's there's no catharsis in that for me and I think performing music live is pure catharsis for anyone who does it if they're doing it it you know from for the right reasons from the right place and that's kind of all I'm after because I know like I've seen bands that just go off like that and I can I mean it's a palpable feeling like the way you're describing bands that you've seen that like have totally blown your mind like you can feel the energy in the room move and like you can feel every other soul just like inflate around you and that is just like the coolest feeling ever and to be able to like participate in it as like in the way that I am able to do is just like it's unbelievable kind of you know like it's it's so uncanny I, this feeling of what they're talking about and this I guess if there's any point to this podcast like even being created it was like the idea that this stuff exists like you might have people might have never experienced this before they have no idea what we're talking about it probably t- sounds like a foreign language and they're like what are they talking about you can see it like go to a show like just yeah. get like get out of the go house go be in there like, go, go get sweaty it. go yeah. don't forget your earplugs <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's loud as fuck yeah health is important um but yeah it's the uh it's that like it exists it's this thing we're talking about that is the area to show you step outside of your comfort zone go by yourself you don't need anybody like you can go and just listen to what they're saying um i appreciate you guys doing this we're gonna uh carly's gonna play a song to get to to end this thing so we'll wrap it up but um uh, it's good. Oh, man, I had a good time. This I did, fun. too. Uh, Great right. questions. Great hey, questions. Seriously. I'm a, I'm a poor man's Howard Stern. Uh, um, you're, you're winning the game. All right, sweet. So, all right, we'll cut it off. We're going to let Carly do this song. It is my favorite song. Um, I love this song so much. Uh, she's doing it. She asked me if I wanted to hear one, and so she's graciously... Uh, said yes to this one it's called trouble it's off their last album uh ep called bloom they're available on spotify instagram all the stuff like we said we don't and they're trying to toe that line of uh you know just doing what they do live and creating what they feel but um you know they are there for you guys to uh latch on to and follow and uh see where they're playing because that is if anything all that stuff should just drive you to their show um, that's what that vehicle is for in the music world. Um, they don't post a whole lot, which I appreciate, uh, <laughs> cause you don't want to overdo that. Uh, not, not really an internet guy. I'm, just, I'm, I'm trying, I'm doing it as much as I can, but I, I like the real world. It's too much of a job. I know. It's such a job. Um, but yeah, they're there. So they're banned, uh, I think, right? Yes. Think, yeah. yeah. So they're banned on Instagram, that kind of stuff. Their website, just Google them. They'll find it. It's Southern, not Souther. And uh, thanks for that. Yeah, if you do that, if you say South, I'm gonna come find you and kick your ass. Um, until then, we're gonna leave it with trouble. Uh, I will see you guys next month. Uh, y'all do me a favor, believe in yourselves, and uh, yeah, have a good one. Cicada skin and my body it's real slow I think of all the time I've spent here wasted Just waiting on my peace to come now I can 
could see my fate in three different dimensions. I'm in love, I'm free, or I am dead in a gutter from a lack of sleep. My very soul, for gone in the name of all things safe and warm. Or oh, the eerie call of a wind chime in the night, crying, never stop moving on. But oh, na na na, tell my mother I'm sorry for the trouble I caused. I'm kindly reminded that she isn't the reason I'm condemned to carry this cross. Oh, na na na, tell my father I'm sorry for the mess I made. It was never my intention to crawl into the crazy he was hiding inside of him. So make it personal, but not too personal. Just give them what they want and honey, maybe they'll set you free. It's nothing personal, it's just I think that we become something that we never meant to be. And it goes whiskey, whiskey, rinse and repeat. No, whiskey, nobody's worried about me. I said whiskey, whiskey, rinse and repeat. I ain't got nobody's worried about me. Oh, no, 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 tell my mother I'm sorry for the trouble I caused. I'm kindly reminded that she isn't the reason I'm condemned to carry this cross. Oh, no, 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 tell my father I'm sorry. It was never my intention to crawl into the crazy he was hiding inside of him. I'm condemned to carry this cross I tell my father that I'm sorry for the shape I'm in It was never my intention to crawl under the crazy He was hiding inside of him 